have the red basket up here. I'm pretty sure we all know what that's for by now. Uh, it's for the Day Spring Shelter Ministry. So if Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And any other area of our life, when we have this, it's all over our face. Amen. 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 You get some good news. I feel like, what's, what's going on? Because you walk around like that. Like Ronda McDonald. If you're a lady, Rhonda McDonald. But amen. You're happy and, and your face shows it. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good in all seasons. Glory. Amen. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you done went through on last week. You know today is the beginning of the week. Amen. But what I do know is that God has been faithful to you. Or you wouldn't be here. Amen. You wouldn't be here. And I ain't talking about in the assembly. You wouldn't be in the land of the living. If God didn't think to keep you alive. Keep you here. And somebody may be feeling, well, why am I here? Well, if you keep walking with God, you're going to find out. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God. Hallelujah. We appreciate God for his mercy. I want you to spread out. So go over here, Brother Blaine. Spread out. Amen. Get some mail for run. Amen. But we appreciate God. We appreciate our praise team Amen. and everybody. Amen. Amen. We appreciate it. We don't take out for granted. Hallelujah. We appreciate you. They got to come up here and rehearse. Everybody got to do their part. Amen. So that we can enjoy the service. And we do enjoy it. Amen. Amen. But I'm certainly glad to be here. Glad to see each and every one of you. Press your way on out to the house of the Lord. That means something to God. Amen. Amen. This word that you don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Because we need each other whether we realize it or not. I won't prolong the service. We're going to go uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 for this morning's message. And I do desire your prayers. As always. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians Bless him and use him, Jesus. chapter 4. Once you see it behind me, I'm going to ask if you can that you will stand you. with me for the honoring of the word of God. Amen. Amen. I'd rather stand for the word than have to stand for the judge. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> stand for the word. He'll keep you out of trouble. Yes, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Y'all there? Amen. Is it behind me? Amen. 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 Second Amen. Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received, received mercy, we faint not. But having renounced 
the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord, for your word is blessed. It's blessed, Lord. Today we ask that you would bless us, Lord, with hearts of understanding. Cause us to become good ground as we sit in your presence. Open up our understanding that we might understand the scriptures. Make it easy to minister your word and make it easy to receive it today, God. Help us, Lord. Direct our tongue in the name of Jesus. Help us to apply the word to our lives immediately. Have your way, God. Do what you do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. For a thought I would like to use... Don't let the devil play with your mind. Come on, come on, come on. Don't let the devil Hallelujah. play with your mind. Paul is writing this letter to what I like to call a difficult congregation. Amen. When you read 1st and 2nd Corinthians, you realize um, that just because these people were saved, it doesn't mean that they had it all together. Amen. If, if, if we have anybody here that has it all together, just wave your hand. Amen. You don't have no areas in your life where you need to grow, where you need to mature. You don't, you don't have no areas in your life where you need to get stronger. Amen. And grow spiritually. Just wave your hand because I need some advice. Amen. Come on. I mean, the word teaches me, but somebody in my generation that has accomplished, I, I just need some advice. Yeah. Amen. So you can just raise your hand. Amen. And I'm sure me and some other saints is going to come to talk to you after a while. Amen. But this particular church, they were very gifted. They were very gifted. Um, Paul said they came behind and no spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. Um still needed to grow. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Um, they still needed to learn some move. things. Amen? Right. Help us uh, and so, uh, to, to me, uh, this partic these particular epistles to this church, uh, at least for me, is very relatable. Right. Uh, because it shows you how to walk with God. Um, in these letters, he, he's teaching them how to grow in God. And how to grow past the point of immaturity in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, he says, therefore, therefore, uh, seeing we have this ministry. I just want to lay this foundation and then we'll get into it just for context. Mm -hmm. Anytime you, you open up something with therefore, that means you got to go back to understand the therefore. He, therefore, he's continuing a thought. Therefore, in the Greek here means for this cause, right? For this cause, because we have the uh, the liberty given spirit of the Lord, and with an unveiled face, behold His glory. Right, um, um, we faint not. Right, in Saint Corinthians three and seventeen, it picks up the thought. It says, "Now the Lord is that spirit." Uh, this is the previous chapter, right, and it leads into chapter four, and he says, "And where the spirit of the Lord is." There is liberty. What I want to say right there is that it doesn't matter what you're wrestling with, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, matter what you're trying to overcome today. If the spirit of the Lord is there, that spirit, his spirit, uh, the spirit of God has enough power to give you liberty, to set you free in that area of your life. It's not talking about liberty like we think about in America, the freedom to do this and the freedom to do that. It's talking about liberty. It's, talk, it's talking about being set free. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You don't have to abide in bondage. All right. It doesn't matter if you've been bound to a particular thing for one year, 
five years, 10 years, 15 years, 30, 40 years, amen, when the spirit of the Lord shows up, if you want to be free, his spirit is a spirit of liberty. He will set the captive free, but you have to believe it for yourself. In 18, he says, but we all with an open face. Come on. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And this is it's the third chapter where I came up with the name for this assembly, the Unveiled Church. And that's why you have in our, in our symbol or whatever, you have the veil coming off of the cross, unveiled. That's why he says with an open face, an unveiled face, you can see yourself, but also see Christ in the word, and you can be changed into his image. If you can't see him, uh, you can't mimic him. That's right. How can you become like him if you cannot see him? Mm -hmm. And so the gospel gives us the ability to, in our minds, see him, see his attributes, see how he lived. Amen. But if we are veiled, mm -hmm. as Paul addresses in the next chapter, if, I, if the gospel be hid, it's for a man of reason. So he says, for this cause we faint not. Um, uh, verse 6, who also made, and back in our text, who also made us able ministers of the New Testament. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Just want to give you context. Mm -hmm. Who also made us Able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of what? The of the Spirit. Um, because he said, we have this ministry uh, as we have received mercy. Mm -hmm. we, 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 not, we didn't do this on our own. So, uh, so he says, God also made us able ministers of the New Testament. Yeah. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the what? Spirit, Spirit giveth life. life. It's, it is more than just learning to quote scripture. Yeah. You have to learn to live it. Amen. I said you got to learn to live it. Amen. It is more important to live this than to quote it. Amen. He says in verse 7, but if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not stand holdfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was done away. It wasn't a lasting glory. Mm -hmm. In verse 8, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? So back in our, in our text when he says we received as we have received mercy from God. And, and having had this ministry given to us. The sense of mercy is referring to it's been received from God. And when you receive something from God and you acknowledge the mercy of God in your life, it ought to make you active for God. There ought to be a response in, in your life, amen, to the mercy God has shown you. Amen. I just can't sit down and sit still, Come on. amen, because I acknowledge how, how merciful he has been to me and how merciful he is to me. Go to 1 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Sister Jane. It says what? According what? To the glorious gospel of the blessed God. To the glorious gospel of the blessed God, God which was committed to my trust. And he says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who have what? Enabled me. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. He said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. Let's go back to our original text. Matter of fact, go, go, go to 2 Corinthians 3 and 5. Jesus. Paul is sharing his heart. Mm -hmm. He says, not that we are what? Sufficient, sufficient ourselves. of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. Yeah. Yes. But our sufficiency is of God. Oh, yeah. of God. 
sometimes we come into the presence of the Lord and we gather with the saints and we begin to get down on ourselves because we know ourselves. And we read out of this holy Bible about a perfect God. Yeah. About a holy God. And we begin to hold ourselves up in his light and we see that we ain't about much. Mm -hmm. But what we fail to factor in is that when he takes up residence in us, yeah. amen, he has the ability to cause us to become sufficient to whatever duty he has called us to perform. Yeah. My God. The important thing, amen, is that we never forget it. And because of this, Brother Paul says we faint not in boldness of speech, in our actions. We don't faint in patience while, we'll suffer, while we are suffering and going through it for the cause of Christ. We refuse to faint. We don't faint. Not because we are strong in of ourselves, but because the God, the joy of the Lord, amen, is our strength. It was also the Apostle Paul that said, having, the, having obtained the help of God, I continue unto this day. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> because this is where we get our thought, our thought from this morning. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Do you see the context now? But having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. If you're going to be saved, you have to learn to be honest. Not walking in craftiness. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Yeah. Hidden agendas and motives. But by manifestation of the truth. We're not hiding nothing. We're showing it. Commending ourselves. To every man's conscience in the sight of God. Understanding that whatever we do and whatever we put his name on, God is watching and keeping notes. And so you, you, you may be haphazard on your job. Uh, you, you may be careless at home when you're handling things. Come on. But when it comes to the things of God, please believe. Even if pastor ain't watching, and even if deacon ain't watching, amen, understand that God is taking notes. Yes. Come on. Jesus. Oh, yes. Uh, but if our gospel be hid, yeah. it is hid to them that are lost. That's why with all thy getting, eventually we must get an understanding. If we don't understand nothing, we need to seek after an understanding of the gospel. Verse 4, in whom, how did they get blind? Uh, why is it here to them? The God of this world. You see that little G? So it's not talking about the true God of this world, but Paul is using expressive language here. Have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God? She shine unto them. The God of this world, Satan, amen, have blinded the understanding of those who refuse to believe, uh, the mental perception of those who refuse to believe. In, in, in 2 Corinthians, back in chapter 3, the previous chapter, uh, verse 13, or verse 14, I'm sorry. It says, but their minds were blinded. Uh, for unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away or removed in Christ. Y'all see that? Uh -huh. and, and so we go back between these chapters to keep the context. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The original context. But our thought is coming out of verse 4. But uh, let's go, I'm sorry, back to our text. Uh, back in our text, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded. Um, I looked up this phrase, the phrase has blinded. 
in the original language in uh, uh, Tuflu. It's a word, Tuflu. I could be saying it wrong, but Tuflu. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it means to make blind. In the New Testament, uh, it's used metaphorically to blunt the mental discernment and darken the mind. To remove the sharpness from off of your ability, mental ability to discern light from darkness, good from evil, right from wrong. And that is so true and it's so evident in the world that we are living in today where they are calling wrong, right, and right, what? Wrong. wrong. And there is absolutely nothing that you can tell them. Right. Young people have to be careful when you're talking to your parents and you're talking to people with years and wisdom on you. When you fall into that, you can't tell me nothing. Come on. Mindset. Yeah. Come on. We are your map to the future. Come on. The difference between a young man or a young woman. Uh, and an older man and, a, and an older woman is that we've been where, where you've all where you haven't been. That's right. And we've also been where you are. Right. And when people are trying to pour into you and get you to the next stage in life, and all you can do is shake your head, no, there's a problem with that, and you setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. yeah. Because you don't know the way. That's right. You need somebody to show you the way. To blunt the mental discernment, to darken the mind. Um, put up John tw uh, 12 and 40. I don't know if I put that in your notes um, in my list or not. It says, He has blinded their eyes and what? Hardened their hearts. <coughs> hardened their hearts. Mm -hmm. This is John chapter 12. Thank you, preacher. Verse 40. Thank you, sir. He, somebody did this. Somebody said an enemy has done this. The enemy has done this. Even though you think you're in control of your own life, you're only in control to a certain degree. Amen. You can ignore all spiritual matters and you still would be affected by the spiritual world. Amen. Because you was born into something that was going on long before you right. came along. Amen. And he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes, nor what? Understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. This is why the God of this world is blinding the minds of those who refuse to believe. Help somebody. Because why? He want to keep you from something. He don't want you to be converted. He don't want you to be changed. And he certainly don't want you to be healed. He don't want you to be delivered. Because he wants to offer you his temporary and weak versions of deliverance while keeping you simultaneously bound to what you're bound to. He don't want you free. He don't want you to experience the liberty of the spirit that we opened up talking about. Come on. Let's look at 1 John 2 and 11. We're talking about the darkening of the mind. Yeah. But he that what? Hated, hated, his, brother, hated his brother is in darkness. You're already in darkness. Yeah. Uh, you, you are already in a place. Uh, uh, you've already fallen from grace. You are already in a bad way. Preaching but hate your brother. You are usher, but you hate your brother. You sing, but you hate your brother. You name it, but you hate your... You are already in a, in a bad way. Come on. And what? Walketh in darkness. And no, it's not. This is the scary part. Whether he's gone. You think you're on your way to heaven, but you're on your way to hell, and you don't even know it because you got hate in your heart. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. My God. The mind. 
is one's intellectual process in a narrow sense or more broadly the sum total of a person's mental and moral state of being. Because we're talking about don't allow the devil to play with your mind. Mm -hmm. To the Hebrew way of thinking, there is no distinctive terminology for the concept of the mind. To the Greek world, the mind plays a very important role in the understanding of humans. So uh, I'm giving you the definition of the mind. I'm going to give you an Old Testament definition and a New Testament. There's scriptures all through this, but we'll say that. Maybe uh, for another time and for the sake of time. Since in the Old Testament there was no separate word that could be used for the human mind, translators of the English versions have supplied other words such as soul, spirit, and heart as the context dictates. To my teachers, pay attention. Thus, precise distinction among these terms are hard to define. This is why you can listen, uh, uh, read a source or listen to a message and they'll break down the heart, the mind, and the soul. And I might come up and break it down a different way with a slightly different definition. Both are right because the word does not just land firmly. It uses these terms interchangeably. It took me years to figure that out. It uses them interchangeably according to the context. A person is a soul having a spirit and a heart. Any of these terms may represent the mind in scripture. This means that the widely, widely held distinction between the mind as the seat of thinking and the heart as the seat of feeling is alien to the meaning these terms carry in the Old Testament. You can't always just pin it down and run it through while you're, while you're putting something together and studying because the context of this verse may be a little different than the other verse. And I know you've run into that at times. Like, now nah, I know this just said this. And it seemed a little like it said something different here. Because the Hebrews didn't have one word to, 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 uh, that was distinct. The Greeks did. While the mind denotes a person's thought, the prominent idea of the mind in the Old Testament is that it denotes the heart. The heart is often intended to include the entire inner person and thus often relates especially to the mind. In these instances, it re relates primarily to the function of the will and, me and memory. Uh, I'll just give you one example. Jeremiah 3.16. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increase in the land in those days, saith the Lord. They shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to where? Mind. Mind. Neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, and neither shall that be done anymore. Right? Uh, now do Isaiah 46 and 8. Y'all still with me? Amen. Remember this and show yourselves, men. Bring it again to the what? Mind, mind ye, O oh, ye transgressors. But the scripture is speaking of the mind as if it's speaking of the what? Heart. You would think transgression comes from the heart. So you see how these terms can be used interchangeably, just to, but it, it, you know, it just depends on the context that is being used. So the basic patterns of Hebrew reasoning continue in the gospel account, the New Testament. Uh, the concept of the mind appears quite rarely. When used, it is mostly in connection with the heart. For example, the phrase, the imaginations of the heart, Luke 1 and 51. And then we're going to... And I didn't give Jamie these, so y'all be patient. He has showed strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud in the what? The imagination, imagination of, their, of heart. their heart. So you see that link between the heart and the mind. You see that? Um, the only other occurrences of the word mind 
come in the statement of the great commandment. Yeah. You shall love the Lord your God mm -hmm. with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your what? Mind. Mind. Yeah. The gospel writers are unanimous in their agreement that Jesus added with all your mind to the original scripture found in Deuteronomy 6 and 5. In Mark, however, the questioner repeats the command of Jesus, but with the word for understanding in the place for the word mind. So let's go to the New Testament. New Testament, in the writings of Paul, one moves into the Greek wording and the Greek uh, 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 way of thinking. Paul understood the mind as distinct from the spirit of man. Now, we're talking about don't let the devil, what? Play with your mind. Play with your mind. Don't allow him to do that. Yeah. Paul understood the mind as, the, as distinct or separate from the spirit of, of man. It possesses the ability to understand and to reason. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 14. I'm not going to go all the way through it because we would have to go all the way to 19. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my what? My mind, my understanding is unfruitful. So you see, he here he separates them. Yeah, do y'all see that? Okay, that's all I'm going to do for just that because we're not dealing with that. It's the seat of intelligence here. But uh, the mind is in that verse you just saw. But in other places, mind is used in a broader sense that includes the entire mental and moral process or state of being a human being, right? Mm -hmm. um, Romans 12 and 2. Yeah. And be not what? Conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of what? Your mind. How is that uh, going to uh, tie into morality? That ye may be what? Equipped to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Last verse, uh, Ephesians 4 and 23. And be what? Renew where? In the spirit of your what? Mind. So you see how he's using it as two separate things? In these contexts, spirit and mind is not the same here, but in other places, it's interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going through that to, to kind of help you when you're in your private reading that you're not reading it wrong or forgetting anything, but context is everything when you're doing your study. Um, I beseech you, therefore, amen, by, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's Romans 12 and 1. You just can't come any way to God. Uh, let me rewind it. <laughs> come as you are as long as you come with respect come and reverence for him, even if you don't know him. You don't have to know somebody to respect him. Amen, Say that again. Amen somebody. And if you don't know that, you're going to learn it the hard way. I, 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 I've never been pulled over by a cop that I knew personally. I don't know none of them. Man, every time, uh, I'm very respectful mm -hmm. and reverent. I, I, I respect and honor that badge. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. Yeah. Doesn't matter if I'm old enough to be their father. Mm -hmm. And they're young enough to be my child. In that setting, as an officer of the state of Indiana, amen, I respect them. I offer them reverence, not as reverence unto God, but rev I respect that office because they have power and authority in their office that I don't have. I don't know them. They haven't earned any respect, but I give them 
respect. Amen, somebody. Right. And even if you don't know God, you better not diddy bop into mm -hmm. his presence because it ain't going to work and you're going to leave with less than you. He'll strip you of what you think you got. Come on. You got to come to him real. And that's why a lot of people have gone to church and never received anything from God and left empty yeah. because you didn't come right. He's God. Yeah. You got to catch up to where he's at. Yeah. He holding all the cards. You can't bless him. He blesses you. Yes. The less is blessed of the greater according to scripture. Yeah. When we say bless his name, we just talking. Because we, we, we have a lack of words, really. Right. You can't bless God. Right. Not in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can bless his name and bless him with the fruit of your lips. Uh -huh. But he don't want it if your heart ain't in it. Yeah. But you just got to learn how to approach. And you and really, we do. We just don't want to. Right. Come on. Come on. When we go to court, you can just be in there that one. You know what I mean? One time, me and my mama accompanied me to court. And we seen some like second cousins in there. And they knew Mary, and Mary knew them. Right. And at the time, I'm about 18. But I got mama with me in court, right? Like, she, mama, mama! Mama didn't have no power in that courtroom. Mm -hmm. So while I'm waiting my turn, and I don't know if I was there for sentence or no, I don't know what I was there for. I had played guilty. It wasn't no long trial or nothing. It wasn't a trial at all. I'm guilty. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I didn't see the, the use of lying. My Lord, I told my lawyer I did it, and she said, "I'm like, like I didn't hear that, and I didn't understand. I wasn't even saved. I ain't fit to lie. I don't. I'm not gonna pay you to lie for me. I'm guilty. Right. I've always I meant what. But anyway, so you know, you're waiting your, for your case to be called, so you see other cases. Right. And it just so happened that one of my family members got up and they told all her business, right? Mm -hmm. And she had seen me and Mama sitting. And the other family member that was supporting the family member seen us in the gallery. Right. So you would think that when that family member's case is over with, you, it's time for you to get up and leave. Right. But since we got all the juice and all the dirt on this family member we ain't seen in forever, guess what the lady, uh, uh, auntie did? Right. Sat on down. Because if you ain't got up yet, I want to know what nephew doing. Y'all right. got our business. You know it's kind of on the other side of the family. Right. There you go. So now my first mom and yeah, mama looking at each other, getting all this up, this lady's business, and now it's my turn. And mama, now mama embarrassed. Uh -huh. And now her baby got to go up here. And everybody know Mary tough on them kids. Mary don't play that. Uh, well, this one slipped through the cracks. This one is in here for selling crack. And like that. It's just a total humiliation. I'm embarrassed for a whole other reason. The mama's embarrassed now. But listen, so that's what I mean by being in, in the courtroom metman. Even if you don't have a case, when the judge come in, they say, all rise. Everybody got to show some type of reverence and respect. And you just there to meddle. Yeah. You just there to meddle. You might be a student. There's people in the gallery for different reasons. They, they ain't got a, a dog in the fight, but they have an assignment from school. Yeah. And they got to, they're taking notes. I went and you could, they got to, you know, I'm blah, blah, blah. You got to do a report and bring it back to class. I asked me how I know because I haven't been in the court enough times. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You have to come to God with respect in the right way and yes. honesty, yes, yes. no matter whether you know him or not. Right. And when you come the right way, he said, I resist the proud. Amen. Amen. He said, but I, you know, if you humble yourself. I'll exalt you. I'll lift you up above your circumstance. I'll bring you out of your situation. I'll break the shackles and set you free from any form of captivity that's in your life. But you got to humble yourself. You got to come with offering nothing but your heart. Lord, I don't know what to do, but I heard about this Jesus and I believe that you can help me. Oh yes, And I'm willing to stay until I get what I need. Yes, Lord. My God. Mm. It's your reasonable service. You present yourself holy and acceptable, and it's reasonable. He ain't asking that much of you. My God. He ain't asking much of you to tell you by telling you to live right. Yes, God. I don't know what living right means. Continue to learn this word, he'll tell you. He says, but you do it. By being not conformed to this world. 
but by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't let the devil play with your mind. I'm not going to hold you all day to catch it. Come on. That ye may prove what is good mm -hmm. and acceptable and perfect what? Will, Will of, God. of God. So I, I, I begin to look up what it means in this text to be renewed, the renewing of the mind. The anachronesis. And it, it means a renovation. Mm -hmm. And it literally said this, a complete change yes. for the better. Yeah. If you don't believe you have room for improvement, your mind can't be renewed. Yeah. You feel like you, you can't get no higher. Mm. This couch is Versace. Come on. There ain't no greater brain in your mind. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is saying, no, uh, what I have, what I'm going to furnish your mind with uh -huh. yeah, yeah. can't be found in the earth. Uh -huh. It's of a higher substance. Yes. Yes, what I'm going to furnish your mind with, yeah. the earth didn't think it meant My much. God. Because I'm going to furnish you with the mind of Christ. Yes, Lord. The way that the Christ thought when he was in the earth caused folk to take up stones and they was ready to break them. Yeah. He said, I and my father are one. And they started looking for stones. Lord. And in that same conversation, I forgot what he said. He ended it and he said it the very same thing, but he said it a different way. And it said they sought to kill him again. Several times when Jesus would talk, they, they would just they didn't know what to do with themselves because his mind was so different. Yeah. My God. They were he was a reflection yes, that, 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 of what the scripture says in the book of Isaiah, where the Lord said, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Come on. Come on. This is good. He said, What? He said, For the heavens are much higher than the earth. I know you think you godly. I know you think you kind of got this figured out. He said, but I'm so much holier and I'm so higher than you that the only way you're going to think like me is if you be quiet and let me wash and renew your mind. Let me renovate. Yes, Lord. Boy, but something got to happen when you renovate. Anybody ever did some renovating around the house? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My uncle, Deacon Franklin, Mm -hmm. very, for those that know, he's very good with his hands. He's an engineer. He's he like, he like you. He's just, he just older. He has a creative mind. So he's always doing something. And I remember before they moved here, as though the mind he wanted the bathroom renovated, the last project I see him do. And he showed me the pictures. Because he did it all while working his job, doing what he do in the church. So it took him a long time. But when he showed me the before pictures and how they tore that bathroom up, I was just like, unk. First of all, you're doing this by yourself. He's like, <laughs> like shaking his head, like, yeah, I am. And from what I, the destruction that I saw, I could not see the image that he had in his mind. Because he didn't hire an architect. From what I know, I don't think he paid for an architect. He stood back, though, with the mind that God gave him, and he looked at what he had to work with. And just start tearing it up. And by the time they got that thing done, I remind you, came in here and was happy. He finally got it done, Frankie. And show, he couldn't even show me cheap. He, and it, that bad boy was sharp. Mm -hmm. Probably added twenty, thirty thousand dollars value on that house mm -hmm. from that renovation. Mm -hmm. But it looked like a mess. Yeah, come on. Going through the process. Yeah. Come on. Somebody like me without a vision for renovation. Wouldn't have even tampered with it. It was already a nice house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can say, this is already nice. Mm -hmm. Why are you spending your money? Yeah. You know, you might want to paint it. And, 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 yeah, I'm going to get some paints and redo my floor. And you're like, why are you waste? In your mind, you're thinking, well, you waste some money. It's a sharp in here. Mm -hmm. But in their mind, they have a vision. Yeah. And it's worth whatever money that they're spending. It's worth upgrading the materials. They don't feel like they're wasting anything. What they're actually doing is making what? An investment in what they have. Yeah. And the last time I checked, you was bought with a price. Come on. Last time I checked, we were purchased with the blood of the Lamb. Come on. 
preacher. And you thought, hey man, okay, I'm saved. I'm saved now. I have a promise of eternity. And you do. Yeah. But what Jesus said, I'm not satisfied with what I got. I love what I got. But I'm just trying to do some upgrading around come here. Yeah, I don't come like come this. Come I don't like that. I'm picking this out of the eye. I hate how that smell. I'm getting rid of I'm knocking down some balls in here. I paid for it, but I don't like how it is. Yeah. I love it, but I don't like it. Yeah. Remind me of the scripture said God is angry with the wicked every day. Even if it's his own children. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Love all my babies, but they don't always do right. Yeah. I don't love everything they do because I love them. Yeah. If I see something that ain't right or something that can destroy them, I let them know I hate that activity. Come on, come on. I hate to see that in you. I hate to hear that in you. Fix your face. I hate that look on your face because outside of me, it'll get you killed out here. Come on, I'm just being honest. You're being real. Come on. And sometimes Jesus will look at us, yes. loving us. Yeah. I've got a message called Young, Rich, and Ruling. Mm. About the the, the 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 ruler that came right. and said, Rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. And only one of the gospels, when Jesus looked at him, it said the scripture says Jesus looked at him and loved him mm -hmm. and told him where he came up short. Yeah. Jesus. He said, Lack thou lack is one thing. Go and sell everything you have and come and follow me. Yeah. And the young rich ruler walked away sorrowful. Because yeah. that was the one thing he loved more than God. Was his money. He God loves you enough to look at you and still tell you you're wrong. Yeah. He loves you enough to look at you and still tell you you need to change. Yeah. He loves you enough to look at you and say you need to be renovated. Yeah. That's what the renewal of the mind is about. And that's why sometimes you testify and say, I've just been having mind battles. No, it's not always the devil in your mind wrecking the house. It's the Holy Ghost up there wrecking the house. And you just getting shook all over the place because he's knocking out walls in the, in the walls of your mind. Amen. With his spiritual hammer, the word of God. And you think you're losing your mind, but he's actually renewing your mind. You wrestling with the Holy Ghost. And he's teaching you how to think right. And it's causing a wrestle in your spirit. And you think it's Satan. And you say, not just God. I'm in here shaking my place up. Breaking it up. You yeah, feel good about it, Brotherhood. My because God. as you let it, God break your mind, uh -huh. yeah. he's raising the value. Oh. When you get done, you're going to see the view. You're going to see the finished product. Yeah. You, amen, going to realize, yeah. wait a minute, God is elevating. I, I, this yeah. was hurting. Yeah. Hey, man, this was hurting. Hey, hey, when oh this thing God. got sanded down, it, didn't have, it couldn't say, ouch. When they begin to cut and saw to put this thing and hammer it and all it couldn't make, it couldn't cry out. But we're going through the same process. Yeah. And that's why sometimes we cry out, you just ouch, Lord. Yeah. You don't let us the devil in him. Mm. Hallelujah. He said, but I'm building. Yes, Satan come to destroy. The difference is, oh, yes. if I knock down the wall, I'm gonna replace it with something better. Yeah. If Satan destroys you, he's gonna leave you in ruins. Ruins. That's the difference. Come on. Either way, it's going to cost you something. Either way, you're going to fill a pool. Come on. Yes. But it's for the glory of oh, God. That's good. Let yeah. God renew your mind. Yes. But don't let the devil play with your yeah. mind. Amen. Oh, God. That's good. In salvation, God performs a complete change yes, Lord. in our way of thinking <clears throat> for the betterment mm -hmm. of our souls. Yes. Titus 3 and 5. Y'all getting something? Yes. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Mm. By the what? Washington. Washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Ghost. Talking about that. The renovation yeah. process of the Holy Ghost. The change for the better yes. through the power of the Spirit. Amen. What the enemy has done in the minds of those who the Scripture declares as lost souls is that he has convinced them that there is no reason to change their way of thinking at all. As a matter of fact, he directs their thinking in a manner that opposes God and his commandments. In Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden Come on. thou mayest freely eat. 17. Mm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day 
that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Here we have a very plain, amen, and simple command, church. It was not complex or deep at all. I would say that most of the things that God commands us are very plain and simple, easy to understand, but because we have an inclination to lean towards the desires of our flesh, we act as if we don't understand why God would require obedience to such a thing. Amen. And the other half of humanity, as we've read in this, uh, this morning scripture, are just blind to what God desires from them because they refuse to believe. Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle mm -hmm. than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And so here, we have the will of God being stated by Eve. Amen. The message that was first given to Adam has successfully reached her. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. God has shared his thoughts on the fruit of the tree, whether or not they should eat of it. He has shared his mind with them. Amen. They know, they have knowledge on how they are to interact with this particular tree. God had instructed them on how to think concerning this tree. In verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Amen. The enemy, the God of this world that Brother Paul wrote about, blinds the minds of the lost by replacing the message, the word of God, with his own message, his own word, with his own way of thinking. Amen. It's very important, hallelujah, yeah. that we don't give any place Glory. to the devil in our life. Come on. It's very important Come on. that you don't give any audience, hallelujah. amen, to hear his message. Lord. Amen. If you want to respect women, if you want to respect yourself, if you want to respect a man, amen, sexually, don't sit up and download pornography Come on. just because it's in your phone. Just because can't nobody catch you doing it don't mean that you do it. Because when you do, you give Satan an audience yes. and Satan preaches and performs his message into your eyes and your ear gates. Come on. Amen. And you begin to look at sex through his eyes oh, and yeah. you become perverted oh, by the God. message of the God of this world. Come on, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Don't give him an audience. Don't give him an audience. God didn't already taught you oh, how Lord. to approach sex. Yes. God has already taught you how to approach relationships. God has already taught you about fornication. He told you how he feels about adultery. But when you listen to Satan's gospel, or Satan's gossip, is his message is going to try to push out the word of God. Yeah, yeah. Verse 5, for God does not know, or for God doth know, mm -hmm. that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, God, knowing good God. and evil. Come on. Listen, these Come two on, folks preacher. had access to God. Yeah. At minimum, uh, Adam had directed. He was passing it down. Either way, either way that thing went. They didn't need nobody else to tell them about their right. father. That's right. That's why I believe they both could talk to him. He was their father. My Lord. They, they didn't need an intermediary. Yeah. God was visiting them. Mm -hmm. He would share his mind with them. He had already shared it. And if there was anything else they needed to know about that subject, all they had to do was ask God. Yeah. You got a whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Is my nose running? Y'all can see that? Oh, sorry, y'all just okay. <laughs> it's good, preacher. I don't like wiping because they, they bring it all. Come on. <laughs> Glory. Thank you. They had access to God. Yeah. You have access to the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have access to teaching. Teach. Come on. Why are you running to everyone else to learn about? He said, come to me. Come I tell you. Come on. But the reality is, I, want, I don't want the truth. I kind of know what you're going to say just based on morality. Yeah. 
So let me Google different ideas about this subject. There will be a never be a shortage of wrong information for us. I'm telling you now. As long as there is a battle between good and evil. Until God comes back to Jesus come back the second time. There will never be a shortage of wrong information. Come on. You say, but I gave you plenty of right information. Right information. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. It didn't take an AI machine to print this out. Come on. Come on. You know, this is before the time of holograms, and that's old technology. But what I'm saying, uh, you know, just technology and, uh, you know, this is, just, this is just old raggedy paper and ink and love a faux leather. Hey, man, I know it ain't your $1,600 iPhone or Android. I, I know it ain't as pretty. I know it ain't your iPad. But this is the Word of God. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yes. Hey, man, you can read this anywhere. I, I mean, it, it, ain't, it ain't posted up in the middle of a beautiful mosque or these uh, Hindu temples that they starting to build around our city that's draped in. Uh-uh, it's just a plain old good old Bible. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no updated versions of this. You might get Come updated on. translations, but ain't no such thing as an updated version of the well, Word of God. It is what it is. And he said, I put my money on it, that it's going to stand the test of time. Yeah, Heaven and earth yeah. going to pass away along yeah. with all his computers. Yeah. He said, but the Word of God yeah. is still going to stand. Because yeah. this ain't just ink on the page. He said, but the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's in the category of his own. Ain't no such thing as other holy books. That's just what they call it. It's phony baloney. Yeah. There's only one holy book or the holy books that make up the Bible. Anything else? Hey, y'all, it's watered down. And what is that? Uh, anything else? What do you say? It, it's just, come on, if you with me today, sis. It's uncivilized. Amen. What the enemy did here as he changed the woman's perspective or outlook concerning the tree. The Lord had already put the tree in its proper context. But the woman entertained a new idea. Tell yourself or someone else, don't let the devil play with your mind. The Bible says in verse 6 that when the woman saw when her perspective changed, that the tree was good for food. God never did, didn't never say it wasn't. Right. That it was pleasant to the eyes. He never said it wasn't. He made it. Of course it's beautiful and good. Mm -hmm. And that the tree is desired to make one wise. He never said it wasn't. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. When the woman saw that the tree was good. At first she saw that the tree would kill her. That was the truth about the tree. That's what God told her about the tree. Right. Come on. First Kings chapter 13, and I'm going to let y'all. It's good. <clears throat> and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the what? Word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord mm. unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense, and he cried against the altar the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon thee. He was pronouncing judgment. They celebrating at this altar. He tell them this altar going to get you killed. Sometimes the very thing that we celebrate that God told us to leave alone is the very thing that can cost you your life. And if it don't cost you your physical life, it's a guarantee if you don't repent and get saved, it's going to cost you your spiritual life. Yeah. It's going to yeah. cost you your soul. Yes, yes. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world yeah. and lose his soul? And he gave a sign the same day. God backed his word up saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent. It's going to break in half. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of this man of God, this prophecy, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him! And his hand, which he put forth against the man of God, dried up. Mm. So that what? He could not pull it in again. So he just froze. The altar also was what, y'all? 
rent and ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. See, it don't matter who come against you. When you're in the will of God, they can't stop nothing that God has ordained for you to accomplish. This man was a king. Right. And what he said went. But if the king of kings diso disagrees with your king, amen. amen. He has the ability to override the king of this world. Yes. Here, we see God backing up his word. Yes. If we just obey the word, God will back up his word. Hallelujah. If we apply the word, <clears throat> God will what? Perform his word. Come on. Verse 6, Sister Jane. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. The boy's whole countenance and attitude didn't change. That enemy, enemy ain't got no shame. The world don't got no shame. Then you call, oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, but, but have mercy on me. Doctor. Was it just for the slit your throat? Uh, I know you got me. I didn't know you had it going under the sheet. But let's talk this out. Right. That's the way of the world. Yes. Changed immediately. Right. I mean, he was just for to kill this man. Seize him. Yep. You think he was get, gonna lay hold on to give him a hug? At minimum, he was gonna throw him in the dungeon, throw him in prison. Mm -hmm. But now that God can drag this man's limb up mm -hmm. and perform the prophecy that the man of God spoke, yeah. the king, please entreat the Lord thy God. Look and pray for me. That my hand that I just was about to use against you right. be restored to me again. Mm -hmm. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him again. And it became as it was before because when you're a child of God, you ain't holding grudges. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing to prove. God didn't back me up. I always can have your hand back. That's right. When you're doing right, don't get wrong because of your attitude. <laughs> I, one thing that bothers me when I hear saints get overly excited about God, uh, uh, you know, God will back me up. I believe he will. But don't get overly excited. It's your spirit sound funny the way you talk. But God will strike somebody down for me. I just believe that. He will if he decides to, I guess. But don't get, that's nothing to get overly excited about. The Bible says pray for your enemies. I pray for, for my enemies because I know God will stand up for me. I know he will. I actually pray, Lord, don't let nobody go to hell because they hurt my feelings. I ain't hurt no more. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't let nobody go to hell because they talking about me behind my back. I don't care, Lord. Let them folks repent and be saved. I, 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 I don't feel good about nobody being lost for me. Come on. Come on. And I also don't take the scripture and apply it to me because I'm the pastor. Touch not God's anointed. If you have the Holy Ghost, you are God's anointing. The Holy Ghost is the anointing. That's right. So you ain't no more anointed than nobody else that's saved. You ain't no more protected because of your office than anybody else that's saved. Preacher. My God, my God, my God. You just have a different office. But we all his anointed children if we have his spirit. So come on with that. We're letting people control you with that. My Lord. Amen. Amen. So look, it, it, he restored the hand, verse 7. Key verse. And the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself and I'm going to give you a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou would give me half your house, half of the land that you own, I will not go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by what? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Uh -huh. Saying, eat no bread nor drink water, key right here, nor turn again by the same way that you came. Nothing mysterious here. Nothing too high for the man of God to grasp. Just simple and plain instructions for him to obey. So verse 10, so he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. He's doing well. Verse 11, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said to them, what way went he? 
For his sons had seen the way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, go get my donkey. So they saddled him the donkey and he rode their own. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an old oak. Yeah. Some people complain and say, he shouldn't have sat down. He's tired. Right. He, that's not a sin. Getting some Jesus rested. Right? Mm -hmm. that, ain't, that wasn't a sin. And he said unto him, Art thou of the man of God that comes from, came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and what? Eat bread. Eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. Because <clears throat> the word ain't changed. For it was said unto me by the word of the Lord, yes. Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. 18. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But what, y'all? Lying ain't nothing new. Folks been lying ever since Adam and Eve obeyed Satan. And Jesus said that, that, that Satan was the father of lies. Yeah. Lying been around a long time. Yes. Folks have been made rich in the natural sense by lying and getting older. Folks have been killed by lying. Right. Folks have uh, ended up landing the woman of their dreams and marrying her by lying. Oh, yeah. Women have landed the man of their dreams and married them yeah. by lying. Yeah. Kingdoms have been built yeah. on lies and kingdoms have come to ruins because of lies. Yeah. Lying ain't nothing you knew. He lied to them. And this is a prophet of God. It don't matter what state office God raised you to, folks will lie right to your face. Yeah. I don't even try to figure out if folks lying to me. I'm a lion to see if God whisper in the ear of the prophet. What, you, uh, what you're doing is tempting the Lord. I'm a lie to the pastor and just see if God, God will reveal it. No, he won't. He'll let you stay in your same little lying state because that's what you want to do. The intent behind the lie was to get the man of God to go against what he knew God required of him. Come on. Uh, it was to set his thinking on a different course, y'all. Mm. Don't let the devil play with Come your on. mind. Come on. I want to emphasize the point uh, in my closing that the scripture says, but he lied unto him. Mm. We are living in a world still, y'all, that will lie to you. Yeah. We are living in a world that will take advantage of your being gullible or naive. We're living in a time where people get a kick out of deceiving people. True story, this is last week we at work, we had some downtown on the job. So, um, guy that goes to a, a church, um, uh, he come in on his phone and I guess he was, he's like, man, y'all see this? So I'm sitting with me and another individual sitting at the table. And he said, man, uh, uh, what did he say? Putin and just unlocked all the museums and he brought all this artwork showing the earliest artwork that Jesus is black and so on and so on. So immediately my discernment, bing, bing. Oh, oh, and the rest of the story was, and he's on his phone, this article on his phone, and he says, uh, and, and man, uh, because he's trying to get Russia to denounce Christianity, so man, they, 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 they're denouncing Christianity because of this, because Jesus, he got proof that Jesus is black. So I'm sitting at the table, I'm like, hmm. So my face tells everything. My face was telling the brother, and he knows, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. But there was somebody else at the table. They, yep, I've been knowing this. And yep, and actually what he did, and he went deeper with the story. Wow. So because my face was what my eyebrows was on touching the rafters. <laughs> this, well, if I look at you like this, why are you talking? <laughs> and, I, I mean, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to believe you, okay? So the young man has known me for over for about twenty years. So he said, "You know what, Pastor? Let me let me uh, look at because there's a fact finding sites. If the story gets big enough, there are sites to fact check it. And it was a big enough internet story. And so while the other guy is backing it up, he's building a house on what this man said. Mm -hmm. Come on. The man interrupts and says, "Oh, it's false." Yeah. And, I, and I, I was like. 
Yeah, I, I, I figured that. You know, governments move in a different way. Even if Putin thought all that, he's not going to move in a clownish way. Right. He's going to move and still in a different way. It just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. While he's reading off the fact, the, uh, the, the, the fact checker site on why it's not true, yeah. and it's already been debunked and proven not true, the other guy is saying, well, no, that's what they put out there. That's what they want you. Because he didn't already invest it in the lie. Right, right. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. He's, he's literally reading and showing. If you just, don't over talk him now. Right. Don't, he's free. He done figured it out. And, and I ain't say I told you so. But now there's a wrestle. And what, you know, they're going to put out what they want. No, these folks put out what they wanted to say. That was debunked. But this is a time that we're living in where yep. folks would rather embrace a lie yes. than hold on to the good old truth. Yep. The good old truth. Good Been good. around from the foundation of the world. Yep. The good old truth ain't new and sparkly, but yet it's new and sparkly. Yep. The good old truth, amen, ain't got no bells, bells and whistles, yet it comes with bells and whistles. Yep. I said the good old truth, on, amen, ain't go. exclusive, and yet it's exclusive. Yep. The good old truth. For an innumerable number to yeah. make their way into heaven's gate. Yeah. The good old truth yeah. might not be what they want, but the good old truth is what you need. Yeah. The good old truth, yeah. amen, yeah. is not celebrated. Yet yeah. the good old truth is celebrated by those that believe that Jesus is the only way to God. The good old yeah. truth yeah. makes folk mad, but when you believe the good old yeah. truth, it'll make you glad. Yeah. The good old Truth is good enough for me, yes. but the world don't want it. But they got to have it if they're gonna be free. Yes. The, good yes. 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 the good old truth. Yes. Come on. That's why they got side tire sites like the Onion News. Yeah. Woo. I almost had a breakdown, mental breakdown, in about 2008 when they came out because I knew what it was. It was satire. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they had a set. They would do interviews and it would look like a real interview. They had one with a little boy. It was satire. He said, yeah, a man came in and I saved my family. I shot him and his arm came off. I shot him and blew his eye out. And people were sharing it like, can y'all believe this if he was black? And, and people was taking this thing to heart. It's satire, it was fake. Yeah. Just like Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. They put them, they put, they put millions into the set. It's over if you add it up over the years to make something appear real, but they're just cracking jokes. Yeah. We live in a world where everything we see on our phone, we take it to heart. All right. Yet on. you can look up at the creation of God and you doubt if he's real. Yeah. You can listen to hundreds of testimonies of deliverance yeah. out down through the years, and you doubt and question whether or not it's real or not. He is real. Hallelujah, he ain't like a friend himself, but he has done enough. So what happened? Come on. 19. Almost done. So he went back with him. Mm -hmm. Over a lie. Mm -hmm. Come on now. This is good. I don't care if you're a prophet too. I know what God this told me. Good. Directly. If he told you something directly, why he got it? Why he gonna change it through somebody else? Right. Come on. That's the same thing with me. Mm -hmm. If I say no, don't go ask your mama. I said no. Right. Even if she say yes, you st both of y'all got to come together and override my yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Parents, y'all need to uh, put that into practice. Come on. Mama might not even know why I told you no. Right. But because mama said, yeah, I'm out of here and I don't see you till later on because you think you sleep. Mm -hmm. No, it's the same thing with God. I told you what I told you. If I came to you direct, I'm not going to send nobody else. The Bible says that when Isaiah... God sent Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, you're going to die. Hezekiah turned to the wall and prayed. Mm -hmm. God answered Hezekiah and, and put more years on his life. Mm -hmm. God sent the exact same prophet. The Bible says as Isaiah was walking away, the Lord spoke to him. Isaiah turned right around with a new message from God and confirmed what God, uh, uh, that God had heard his prayer and answered his request. Yeah. God then gave you his spirit and you let some person on Facebook or on a Bible class tell you that that ain't real. What an insult. You let a human being 
undermine a spiritual, it's a supernatural experience that only God can allow you to have. Now you're wondering if the spirit you got is really the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with you? My Lord. You're giving the wrong people the audience. <sighs> Glory to God. I'm going to let you go. Oh, God. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Nobody. Come on, preacher. He went back with them and did eat, drink bread, and drink water. Everything God told him not to do. Everything. Yep. And it came to pass, y'all, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet that brought him back, to the lion prophet. To the lion prophet. And he cried, he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Imagine that. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, God told you directly, that has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back, sin number one, Ate bread, sin number two, ooh, ooh, and drank water in, in the place, sin number three, of which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. You won't be buried in honor because you disobeyed, you dishonored God. Yeah. You ain't going to keep prospering. Hallelujah, when you dishonor God. And it came to pass, mm -hmm. after he had eaten bread and after he had got drunk, that he saddled, at, oh, I'm sorry, that he, after he had drunk, mm -hmm. that he saddled for him the donkey to wit, for the prophet whom he brought back. Right. Now I want you out of my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when he was gone, a, whoa, what that say? A, a lion, lion met him by the way, way and Come killed on. him. Mm -hmm. The Bible likens Satan unto a roaring lion yeah. that seeks whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. When the man of God was in the will of God, the lion's teeth wouldn't have penetrated his skin. Come on, right, and testify, right, right, Dan. Right. Come on, come on. Come, come on, on now. He wouldn't yeah. even have been on the lion's radar. No. Nope. But when you step out of the will of God, yeah. when you step out of what the old saints call the ark of safety, yeah. now you expose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To my, to my pew babies, to the ones that, that have been brought up in this thing. Yeah. As you get older, you're going to see around you the destruction of the world touching your peers. Mm -hmm. And the only reason it has not touched you is not because you're better than them. Mm -hmm. It's because right now you're in the ark of safety. Amen. But keep on inching out of that ark. Keep on praying with God. Come on, preacher. Keep on wanting the world and the devil, too. Come on. Keep on wanting, uh, uh, acting like you want God and the devil, too. Mm -hmm. Keep on straddling that fence yeah, and see yeah, if yeah. A, a spiritual pit bull don't grab that leg that's on the wrong yeah, side of it. Yeah, yeah. My Lord. <clears throat> My God. What verse are we in, church? 25? Uh, 24? And when he was going to lie and met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the donkey stood by it. The donkey didn't even run off. It wasn't even the target. The lion should have been attacking the donkey. Come on. Donkey didn't even get scared. It stood by. And the lion also stood by the carcass. Judgment. Oh my God. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. 26. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord delivered him unto the lion, which have torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. Listen to the liar. Come on. Folks will lie on you, get you in trouble, and then tell the story. Yeah. That's, what, that's the wickedness of the world. That's what God is trying to get us away yes. from. Yes. Just because they invite you to their table don't mean they're your friend. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, 27, is that where we at? Yeah. And he spake unto his son, saying, Prepare my donkey and throw the saddle up on him. And they did it. And he went and found his carcass in the way, and the donkey and the lion standing by the carcass. And the lion had not eaten the carcass nor uh, torn or attacked the donkey. Mm -hmm. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. That shows that the old prophet don't, don't fear God. Liars don't fear God. In my mind, I'm a false prophet. I'm lying. And I got to make this. I would have been terrified of that lion. 
I would have left that man right in the middle of the road and came back later. Because I'm thinking the lion is there for me. I, I ain't no better. But that's how arrogant wickedness and the, when, when God blinds your mind, you don't even realize judgment's right by on you too. You think that you so focused on somebody else getting their comeuppance. Hey Amen. You know, and, and, and you thought I'm on your shoulder. If you had the fear of God, you wouldn't have went nowhere near. Right, right. You would have said this line, I ain't right either. Yeah. But that's when you in sin and you blind, you don't realize you ain't right. Woo! You don't realize it. You go into, I, I used to go into fear of an hour, but I'm shaking. Before I got saved, when my friends would die in the streets, I, I knew it, it could have been me. Yeah. I hated it going. I, didn't, I wasn't one of them people in the crowd all oh, hitting my horns and, oh, we're going to turn up. Man, I'm sad and scared. Yes, yes. Maybe one of the reasons he saved me. Right. Because I knew I deserved to be in this box too. I, he got a mom and a daddy that love him like my family loved me. And he's 16 and dead. He's 17 and dead. And I'm 17. Come on here. Come on. I didn't just walk by the line. No, it got, an, it got my attention. Yes, yes. It wasn't something to post, all oh, RIP to my dog. It wasn't something to post. Come on. It made me think about my immortal soul, my eternal soul. Come on. Walking by the judgment like he ain't getting it next. Pick this carcass up. And 30, he laid his carcass in his own grave. No, sir, you 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 going in that grave one day too. But he laid it in his own grave. And they mourned over him saying, Elias, my brother. You ain't my brother. You participated in this. My God. You have caused me. Yeah. If you ain't helping me to make it, what are you helping me to do? I know, listen, we live in a world where a boy will blow, a person will blow your brains out, come to your funeral and kiss your mom on the cheek. Real life. Oh, my brother, my dog, you killed him. Yeah. Is this not reality preaching? Reality. Oh, last my brother. Mm. It's your brother? It is. Mm. Yeah, I made the choice, but you helped me. Yeah. I told somebody that's supposed to be my brother. Years ago, they was a stumbling block to me. And years later, they came to me. Supposed to be my brother in the Lord. I knew you was, I knew he wasn't saved really, though. And it's mentioned something to me. I said, man, you was a stumbling block to me. You was a stumbling Man, man, I said, but you was, I just want you to know. You was a stumbling block to me, man. I'm coming to you with that. Some people will introduce things to you yep. that ain't good for you, and, they, and they're bound. Right. So then they're supposed to be yep. saved, yep. and they want you to be caught up. I, I told them to it. I said, you were yep. a stumbling block to me. Right. Just, I looked them right in his eye. Jesus. And you know, he just got, got right out of my face. Because some folks, if they don't want to walk with God, they don't want you to walk right. with God. Come on, you right. think you mad at Jesus. Come don't on, think you're going to call running them down, run them down to me. Do you on, think he, yeah, he's still the same yeah. yesterday, today, and forever? Yeah. Come on. He's still good. Come on. Even when he allows us to experience some bad. Yeah. My Lord. Mm -hmm. New Edition said, can you stay in the rain, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That's when I, it's time to close now. And it came to pass after they buried him that he spake to his son saying, when I am dead, bury me in the grave wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. In death, I can't even get away from you. Wow. That's what happened when you marry the enemy. And I ain't talking about marriage, but when you, either you're going to marry Jesus or you're going to marry the enemy. Come on. Come on. Either you're going to be the bride of Christ or the bride of Satan. That's right. And in death, you're going to still have to stay with the one you chose to obey in life. Oh, well, hey, hey, come on here. You're going to be in hell right along with them devils. My God. Imagine being in hell with the one that helped you get there. At least I can do my time by myself. And I ain't talking about purgatory. But if I'm going to be punished, I don't want to see you. My God. When I get buried, bury me with him. Sickening. Sickening. You leave the church because you want a man and you, you, you didn't got with a man that's wicked, evil, and suicidal and you, you don't know it because he's so handsome to you. These are the type of men that kill you, the kids, and himself. If I can't hide you, can't nobody hide you. Women do it too. But if you had did it God's way, uh, even though he was handsome, even though she looked good, because the fact that she wasn't even saved and in the will of God, they didn't have a chance with My you. God. Because you did it God's way. Right. That's right. 
But when you want to help God, you're going to have problems. Yes. That's it. I'm done. Let me look for a place to land. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. My, 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 my. Glory to God. Jesus. There it is. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. We're going to land this plane. Amen. But who said amen like that with the people? <laughs> amen. Y'all been good. Y'all been attending. But ye have not so learned Christ, y'all. This is the this is something I want you to grab hold of. This is gonna help you. Next verse. <clears throat> if so be that ye have what? Heard him. Heard him. You're not resisting what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the word of God, like it's that sandpaper, but it's got a purpose. Yeah, yeah. You know, some the world will hurt your feelings. You get and it, 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 it's just to hurt you. Mm -hmm. If the word of God hurts you a little bit, it's to better you. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's always helped me as a child of God. Amen. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Former conversation, that language, when you say, it means the old lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what? Corrupt according to what? Deceitful, deceitful lust. lust. Lust is deceitful. Yeah. Lust will say, well, you know, this is a need. Come on. Amen. You know, and there's nothing wrong with this need. Mm -hmm. The deceit is there's nothing wrong with the need. But you have to wait on God to fulfill the need. Yes. That's the will of God for our life. Yes. Notice I said our life. Yes. Once you put the old man in its proper place, you're ready to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't do it at the same time or else the Bible calls you double-minded. Right. So you have to put off the old man first. Put him in his proper yes. place first. Yes. Denounce him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Denounce the things within you that separate you from God or the things within you that you know God don't approve of. Yes. Don't defend it. Yes. Even if you still do it, don't defend it. Yes. Lord, I understand there's some things in my life yes. that you're not pleased with. Lord, take those things off of me. Yes. Yes. Some don't want to take pray that prayer because you know God going to answer you. Mm -hmm. He answers all your other prayers. He will answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. And he's going to replace it with something better. It might be all you know, that good old crutch. It's always been there for you. He said, I want to be your crutch. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The scripture said, be not drunk with excess of wine, but be ye filled with the spirit. Mm -hmm. See, the replacement. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to do, I want to be your comfort. I want to be your escape. I want to be your hiding place. A man will be a hiding place. I want to be your secret place. Come on. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. 24, I think that's our last verse. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and what? True, True holiness. Not hypocritical holiness. That's what we talked about last week. Yeah. But true holiness. Let's put our hands together for the word of God. Don't let the devil play with your mind. Somebody said, pray with me. Don't play with me. Amen. And the devil is a friend.